Let's have a little look at my listening room today. We're running the Lin LP12. with a Gryphon Diablo 300. It's got the mono switch as well. Perfect for this shootout today. The speakers are Gryphon EOS 2s. I'll show you the back. And then the rest of the listening room this way. And I should mention as well, the cartridge, the card, it's an MC card, it's a uh, LIN card, it's called an ecstatic MC card, so uh, very nice. Let's get to the shootout. Hi everyone, Steve from the Audio Pals, welcome. As you can see, finally got my ERC, the doors, thank you from one of my viewers, uh, donated this to me to basically shoot out today, excited to do that. Between the Rhino 2009 cut, that Bernie Grunman cut and the 2021 v Vinyl Me Please VMP cut that Bruce Bodnick mastered in Bernie Grunman cut. So um, going to be a fun one today. You already saw the equipment that I'm using behind me. Um, the Diablo integrated amp does have a mono switch on there. So that makes the shootout much easier when you're doing mono shootouts. And uh, one other housekeeping issue, um, we've talked a lot about Kirsten Edkin. She's been on my channel, obviously, Kevin Gray, um, Shades and Sound. Uh, this one is not a limited pressing. So if you're to go to the Acoustic Sounds website or uh, InGroove or Elusive Disc, just pre-order it. They're not gonna, it's not a limited run. They'll press more, pre-order it, and eventually you'll get them. I know there's another run that's uh, being pressed or has been pressed. So uh, if you haven't made the pre-order already, get that done for Kirsten Edkin's amazing Shapes and Sound album. Now, of course, I'm here at the Hi-Fi Center. You saw the listening room I'm in. If you want any of the uh, Hi-Fi gear, want more information on the cost, check out our website, hificenter.com. And of course, Click on that subscription button. It helps me out a ton. Now let's get to the Doors shootout. We'll see you on the other side of the audio file. Here it is. Finally got it. ERC's The Doors, 450 limited to retail price, around $500 US. I was lucky enough, one of my viewers, and thank you so much, he wanted me to... Um, do a shootout with this one and of course I showed at the top my Vinyl Me Please cut and my 2009 Rhino cut. I've had a lot of viewers going, we got to get the original. I couldn't find a good original. Uh, a lot of the originals out there, either they're really expensive or um, really crappy and don't sound great. So I'm going with these three um, behind me. I've got a pretty decent setup today as you saw from the top. Um, the, the Diablo or the Gryphon Diablo integrated amp does have a mono switch as well which makes it uh, really nice listening to some of these mono cuts um so erc but i haven't i haven't read or listened to or watched any of the reviews of this record so i'm coming at it from a 100 percent fresh perspective i know nothing of what anyone said so far about this album um, when i'm comparing it to the other two that i have here i will say though for years i mean i had the stereo doors mobile fidelity and of course um, if you're into stereo, the go-to, the analog productions uh, go-to, mastered by Doug Sachs, 45 RPM cut. Um, again, you can't compare stereo to mono, and you really can't compare 45 cut to 33 cut. So I'm not going to compare the two. I think the stereo versus mono doors are two different two different animals altogether, and I don't think um, that would be... You know, it's like comparing apples to oranges. It just doesn't make sense, um, you know, because obviously the instruments are coming from different from different speakers in the stereo versus the mono. So we're gonna stick strictly with the mono um, and really focus on that today. So getting back to ERC limited to 450. Now this is cut all valve on a 1965, I think it's called a Lyric System. It's in true mono directly from the original dedicated mono masters, it says here. And so ERC, there's no equalization, no compression, or any other processing was added during the during the cutting process, it says here. So basically what they did 
they took what's called the Lido tape, which is the mono master marked Lido, okay, and it means leader edited duplicate of the original tape. So this is a duplicate original that they uh, used to cut this album. And according to Bruce Botnick, it's the same exact tape that the 1967 lacquers were used or were, were cut so with so I mean that's interesting as well so let's get to it I will start with this um, I made some pretty good listening notes here and I really wanted to go over my thoughts on it I know a lot of viewers have been asking me for a while would I you know if I was going to review this one and here it is I mean I found it fuzzy found it very natural but organic um, it's very raw very very raw um, and it depends on, I think if, if you come from like the stereo side of the doors and you get into this one, it takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of the sound, but I mean, it's mono. It's the way it was going to sound in the studio at the time. Um, you know, Bruce Spotnick even said in one of his interviews about this album that, you know, this is a live recording, live performance, right? It's raw. So there is some distortion, um, on this album when you listen to it closely, now, I'm not sure. I don't think it's a tape distortion. It might be some sort of mastering mastering distortion. I mean, I know ERC uses uh, what they're called EL34 amps, and um, they get driven hard in the in the mastering process. So if they're, if they're not replaced often enough, um, there might be some distortion there, but it's not very noticeable. Um, all in, I liked the sound of this. Um, I mean, it's $450, $500 US. Now, is the sound that much better than a $50 Vinyl Me Please pressing or a 2009 Rhino pressing? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today as well. I mean, this is a 50 plus year master tape. We know it's been used a million times, um, but I did find, I did find all, all in like the vocals. I mean, that's another thing about the vocals um, on a mono pressing like this from 50 plus years ago. This is this is cut for you know the AM or mixed for the AM radio market. So I mean the vocals and the bass are going to be more profound, more upfront on a mono pressing. So you're gonna you're gonna hear more of the vocals, more of the bass, and the drums more in the back um, with the organ, of course. So that's what you're hearing in this one. This is more obviously authentic to what it was like in the studio at the time in 1967. Clearly, it's raw, very organic. Um, a little fuzzy, but I think that is how it sounded at that time. I think if you listen to the stereo and you listen to this, it's confusing because it's two different beasts and you can't do that. I think you just got to strictly listen to mono cuts and make a comparison there and, and not worry about the APs or the MoFi uh, cuts that are out there. Um, I definitely didn't want to listen to the stereo versions right after I listened to the mono one. So, all in, um, is it worth $450? Well, I'm gonna compare it right now to the Vinyl Me Please one, but again, um, you know, it was raw. It, uh, even in the song, The End, um, it's, a haunting, it's a haunting song, as we all know. Um, I loved Morrison's vocals in that, on that track. Um, I saw nothing wrong with it at all. It was haunting. Um, it probably was what it, was, what it would have been like if you were sitting there and watching him in that sound booth singing that song and I think they only did uh, did that did that in two takes if I'm not mistaken so which is pretty amazing back in this day that they did it in two takes so um, I find that quite amazing but it was you know all in very organic um, and I love I love the vocals on this one now I'll get back to vinyl me please or I'll get back to the ERC but here's the vinyl me please not a bad cut done by Bruce Botnick mastered by Bruce Botnick uh, cut by Bernie Grunman uh, using his all valve system as well. Now, less distortion in this one because this is a digital file um, from the masters. I'm assuming from the same tapes that the ERC used. This is a 30, what was this, a 32-bit transfer. Um, really, they cleaned it up. There's not the same distortion. You don't feel, you don't really hear the same distortion. Uh, vocals and bass are a bit more dynamic um, all in I feel there's a little bit more warmth in this one it's not as punchy it's not as um, fuzzy it's, it's warmer um, the vocals are a little bit more set back as well and it just overall um, has more of that I don't know more of that warm feeling to it and just doesn't have that raw punchy feeling that the ERC has but I, one thing that's really interesting about this record here is that then in the um, the masters on the on the song the end and light my fire the singles 
that came out for radio or have have the correct speed whereas on the album those two songs they're they're a little bit off speed apparently so um which i found interesting i i couldn't tell i mean that's something that i read um that bruce botnick was mentioning as well but um it's a little bit off speed so he fixed that up on this on this um cut on the vinyl me please cut so it's the same speed as the singles where i would assume then that um, ERC would have fixed that up, right? But he did say, which is interesting, that the perception box um, that he remastered a few years ago, the surround sound, has the proper the proper timing of of, of the songs as well, of Light My Fire and uh, The End. Now, it's going back to um, the Rhino cut. Now, I didn't find it as raw. I didn't find it as exciting. Um, I'm not sure why that was, but it, it was a bit muddy, a bit flat. Um, the bass and the vocals were a bit, I don't know, um, just weren't as dynamic and um, seemed to be really pushed back in most of the songs as well. So I don't even have it here. I should probably put it up right now. But as you can see here, this is the Rhino 2009 cut. So what's this, 25, 30 bucks? You know, it's okay, but it just doesn't have the same depth. Um, it just is a little bit muddy. It doesn't have the same dynamics either. You're just not going to sit there and go, wow. Um, whereas with the Vinyl Me Please, you're getting that. It's, um, you know, it does have a lot more um, pep to it. But if you really want more bite, um, you know, maybe try the ERC out if you want. But I mean, for 405 or what is it, 450, 500 bucks compared to $50. Um, is the sound quality that much different? Well, I mean, I tried it on this system, as you can see, use the mono switched. I also listened to these records in one speaker as well, um, and also two to really gain a real good sense of each cut. And I wouldn't say this is terrible sounding. I wouldn't say it's, you know, worth $400 more than the Vinyl Me Please. I think if you have it, you'll be happy with it. Um, and if you have the Vinyl Me Please, you'll be happy this one as well. You don't need to go run out to get the ERC because it sounds that much greater. It's it's just raw. It just has more raw punch to it. That's all this is. And it has a lot to do with maybe the mastering um, than anything else. Um, as we know, it wasn't EQ'd where this one would have been EQ'd through Bernie and Bruce Botnick. So it's, you know, for $500, yeah, I mean, it sounds great on the system that I have here. Music, obviously, is, is everything has, everything's subjective, right? So, I mean, I have no skin in this game. This is what I heard today, you know. I would probably stick with a $45, $50 Vinyl Me Please if you get this. And I should mention, too, it's got this really cool um, brownish marble as well, and it comes with the Light My Fire Crystal Ship Single, which is nice and nicely packaged and has a really nice... Um, really nice uh, booklet in it as well. And even the ERC, I will say it's got the OB strip, um, you know, very nicely packaged when it came. It also came in a nice, um, you know, wrapped in nice tissue and it does come with an authenticity card here, as you can see. And this one here is um, of 450. This is number 435. So, I like the doors, like I said, I, you know, I've been running the stereo versions for years. I've had the MoFi for years. Um, my go-to for stereo, definitely the analog productions mastered by Doug Sachs. You can't go wrong with this. And you really, there's a big difference. You can really, I mean, because the doors was recorded in a four track, um, you know, the bass and the vocals are really locked in the mono. Um, when it was mixed into stereo, you can really hear differences. And I think that's what a lot of people are used to is the, the, the doors in stereo, especially in songs like the VN where the drums are, have been separated, whereas in mono, obviously everything's together. So that's probably one of the big reasons if you're to listen to this AP uh, cut next to, you know, the ERC cut, <laughs> there's definitely some big, definitely some big differences. And I wouldn't compare apples to oranges type of thing, right? This is definitely, um, you can't compare the two, but I don't know. I wouldn't go out and spend $500 for this one when I can pick up a beautiful mono vinyl me please cut for what, $40, $50 in the aftermarket. So that's one man's opinion. It doesn't mean much, but again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you on the other side of the audio files.